Hello and welcome to Japan Objects. My name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a professional kimono teacher living in Kumoto, Japan. In this video, I want to talk to you all about vintage kimono. I receive a lot of questions about what vintage kimono are, how to examine their quality and age and how to take care of them. And yes, it's very daunting when you begin with your vintage kimono journey, but it's so worth it. In this video, I want to give you some essential tips and tricks on vintage kimono. Let's get started. What is the difference between vintage, secondhand and antique? Well, the answer is a little different when talking about kimono. In Japan, there is only a distinction between recycled kimono and antique kimono. Antique kimono refers to everything that is pre-war and everything that is made after that is recycled. So kimono from the 1920s, 1930s and beyond are antique and a kimono from the 50s or 60s would be regarded as recycled. What types of kimono can you buy? There are casual and formal kimono. Casual are kimono you can wear in your everyday life. They usually have a pattern all over or no pattern at all. They don't have any family crests and their sleeves are rather short. Formal kimono worn to fancy occasions or celebrations like weddings. The most formal kimono for unmarried women is so-called furisore. Furisode is very easy to distinguish because they have a very long sleeve up to 100 to 115 centimeter long. The most formal kimono for married women is the so-called kurutome sode. Those are kimono that are completely black and they have a pattern along the hem. And they have five family crests. When your kimono has a family crest, it always means that kimono is formal. And do not worry too much about wearing a family crest that's not yours. Most Japanese don't care about it, and if they would, the whole secondhand kimono business wouldn't work, right? Today, family crests are more a symbol of formality to make that specific kimono formal, and less a symbol of where you and the kimono belongs to. A little less formal than those two are so-called homongi. All of those formal kimono require a formal obi that is called fukuro obi. Fukuro obi are obi that are about 4 meters long and up to 36 centimeters wide. They are usually super sparkly and gorgeous. How to tell the age of a kimono? That is next to impossible when you're not a professional. You would need to know the different trends of decades and it also requires a lot of experience with old kimono and obi. I think the easiest way to tell is if the kimono has a red or a white lining. Most of the time red lining is pre-war, therefore antique, and white lining usually is post-war. How to choose a obi for your kimono? Hmm. I usually buy what I like and I do recommend you to do the same. Especially when you're not living in Japan, you should not worry too much about if the formality of your kimono and obi matches because you simply wear them and should have fun. But an easy way to play around with obi is definitely how you tie them. There are thousands and hundreds of different obi musubi out there. There are a lot of cute little bows, but also very elegant otaiko or a cooler Ginza Musubi. Those are the Obi Musubi you probably see the most, but there are even more. And you can check out my video link down below for a few cute Obi styles. How to take care of your kimono. This is the most daunting thing about vintage kimono. Especially all the pieces are usually made of silk and silk as a protein based fiber shouldn't be washed. You can easily find out if your kimono is silk or not by doing the burn test. You pull out a small strand of fiber of the kimono and burn it. When it smells like burned hair, it's protein based and therefore silk. When it smells like paper or more like paper, it is cotton. And if it doesn't burn at all but 
smell and it smells like plastic, it is polyester. Cotton and polyester kimono can be easily washed at home. I do it by hand, but I also know friends who put it in a washing net and then into the washing machine on mode for delicates. As I said, silk doesn't have to be washed at all, but you should air your kimono from time to time, especially after wearing them. You should hang them up in a place with good ventilation and best is no sunlight. And when you don't wear them so often, I recommend to air your kimono twice a year. This is also why it's always so frustrating when a silk kimono gets stains. Stains are a very complex topic and in Japan a kimono cleaner has to pass a national exam to actually practice. You would have to know when the kimono got stained, what that stain consists of to actually get it out. So I recommend to bring it to a professional. But when you really, really want to try it at home, be aware that you will probably make it worse than better. As a kimono wearer with over 100 pieces in my wardrobe, my advice is, is that stain really that bad? Think twice. If there are black mold stains on your kimono, not even a professional can guarantee you to save it. So you will probably have to throw it out. If you don't want to, I recommend you to store it separately from your other kimonos because the mold can move on and affect your other gorgeous pieces. However, wearing an undergarment, a so-called nagajuban, can help to avoid sweat stains on your kimono. Especially for silk kimono, that is a life saver. You can also find nagajuban in the Japan Objects shop. What kind of figure suits a kimono? Basically, every silhouette fits in a kimono. Because when you wear a kimono, the kimono is what you want to show off, not your body. That is why a lot of people pad their curves when wearing a kimono or like me even create new curves to show off the kimono even better. Obviously kimono come in different sizes and it's really hard to find bigger sizes on the second hand kimono market. If you want to know your size check out the size guide on Japan Object Store. When to buy a kimono? There are three kimono seasons. The first season starts in October and lasts until May and is the season for lined kimono, so-called awase. After that is the season for unlined kimono, the so-called hitoe. And the hitoe season with June and September actually sandwiches the natsumono season, which is the season for summer kimono and also yukata. But with the global warming, it's getting warmer and warmer everywhere around the globe. And even in Japan, less and less people do care about those kimono seasons and usually they only wear what they're comfortable with. I do exactly the same. So for me, my unlined kimono or yukata are like t-shirts I wear on hotter days and my lined heavy winter kimono are for colder days and especially when you live on the other side of the globe those seasons don't apply to you at all so i think comfort is what counts how to tell the difference between men's and women's kimono this is my favorite question because it's so easy to answer the two most obvious differences are first the sleeves Women's sleeves are open and they also have an opening under the shoulder, the so-called miyatsuguchi, that is used when putting the kimono on, when the kimono is folded down the waist. Men's kimono don't have that and the sleeves are fully attached to the kimono and of course they are closed. Also, women's kimono are secondly longer because they are folded down the waist when putting it on. Men's kimono are worn like they are. That's why they are shorter. Generally speaking, the difference between men's and women's kimono come from how they are worn in history. While women's kimono evolved a lot, they became longer, the obi became wider and was placed higher on the waist. That's why the sleeves are not attached. 
Men's kimono are basically what samurai wore in history. <sighs> okay, there was a lot to cover in one video, but I hope you found all the answers you were looking for and I hope you are now encouraged enough to buy a vintage kimono and give it a new loving home. When you're looking for an authentic vintage kimono like this, check out japanobjects.com. And you can also find more kimono advice on my own YouTube channel, Billy Matsunaga. Thank you so much for watching and look out for more videos from Japan Objects. Bye!